let's look on atmosphere now. And this is one of the important objects besides. So I will say um, the probably atmospheres is uh, one of the most important to provide the properly mood and lighting. So even you may have it in perfect shaders on your terrain, but provide proper lighting and atmospheres, you can bring up a lot of details. So in, in some cases, right lighting is good. So let's go inside the atmosphere. And you notice right here we have our generic settings for the atmosphere, where we have density colors. Notice it's enabled right now. So if we look right here, you can see we enable automatically atmosphere as soon when we switch to atmosphere tab. And it's make logic because you don't want to disable atmosphere while you will work in an atmosphere. But overall, some time when you go to terrain, as example, it's maybe disable atmosphere already. And if you switch, it will convert and enable atmosphere so you can preview. Right here in your preview windows, you can see the haze of the atmosphere it's created. We don't have any clouds at the moment, so it's overall preview. Here, right here in the atmosphere settings, we have the main haze. It's in atmosphere and the haze horizon. We have it blue sky density. And we have it also subchild of blue, guys. It's a blue sky additive and decay. So red sky decay is what happened right here when we have it on a horizon and it's covered. By manipulating these ones, you can create almost any type of the sky. So and we did in some hour tutorial before you remember a little bit. So we did increase the haze all pop up so we can create like very high polluted area. Uh, we can change and manipulate on the haze color. So let's, for example, make it darker right here. So we can adjust hay density. All of this, of course, can be. And blue sky density, you notice if we bring all, it will bring child as well. It does create all this, apply additional nice coloring, um, the natural lighting to our atmosphere. And one thing, notice when we move right here, this is going in a progressive change. So they will increase as a child. However, you can go separately and you can modify those settings as well. Some of them will be related based on the values you're using. So right here, example, we can bring a little bit more to the color blue. And there we have quite a bit haze freezing look. Okay, next we have height control. And this is um, exponential, so it's a mean, it's a with a medium dense of the haze so we can create it and we can bring this case all the way down bring up same we have the exponential height for the blue sky same it's a mean of the point we have it also ceiling adjustment and a floor so top and bottom we can take and bring atmosphere you know maybe to just 300 meters so you can control this atmospheres. These atmospheres also will be useful if you zoom out. For example, we go all the way out of the planet. Okay, let me zoom far, far away. And you can see right here, we also have this atmosphere because it's low. We have a very low atmosphere and the sun is um, coming out. So when you create planet and you want kind of increase on the atmosphere on height and other ones on the density so you can modify the settings to bring them up or a little bit lower okay next we also can okay, let me go pop up this one for example 3000 and right here you can see we kind of bring this atmosphere out on our planet so it's kind of going up Okay, and if you want to go crazy, we can go 7,000. So it will go all up. Let's go take this haze density, bring all the way down. Kind of create more natural glowing around the planet if you're too far away. Okay, let's bring back. Okay, next we also have a lighting effect. 
and this is um, haze glow and haze power so we have the sun as our light source currently it's only one sun um, and a haze glow amount it's how much glowing from this and power how far uh, how much power it will going from so this is distance and this is how power single point same things apply to the blue sky glow and power and as well to environment light so we have it this is more as a global settings and um, again with lighting it's more complex kind of you need it readjust almost every small effect for example if you need to use or smooth out ambient lights uh, maybe pop up a little bit let me readjust here we have the blue sky dense uh, add a little bit like here and this point in lighting for example I want to add a little bit more glowing effect to overall area so I'll pop up amount and bring a little bit power so we should have it right here nice hazing going so overall these values and we're going a little bit more in details again when we go and create more realistic atmospheres different type presets just um, I recommend for you right now don't worry too much just open play see what all these settings will modify and create for you okay we also can apply shadow functions we have it and it tweaks on specific ambient light currently right here you can see we can bring this little bit higher so we'll reduce slightly and shadows contrast in this case okay we can fake that power increasing as well the increased sharpness and we have a blue sky density color so we can take it down so it will be black going in some case if you create like in space maybe look you want to do as well this way okay and overall quality we did use this quality process when we rendered before if you remember and this is how many samples will take it uh, if you increase it will take a little bit longer time but you will reduce some noise that if generating in your sky overall um, Terrigen have a nice render engine and I found out it's work very well but just let you know right here in the quality atmospheres it's where you can add also notice still we in atmosphere tab another things we have it we can add clouds so let's click on this you notice right here we have a high level so there's 2d the different you always can convert 3d to d 2d clouds the different is how they calculate this is will be almost like projection snap so they have it no depth but it's work nicer when you do in the um, high in the sky so because you don't have these dimensions when you do in a high level you want to do 2d if you come closer you probably want to have a 3d same like low level right here we want to create this density so obviously you want to create 3d if you want lower okay one thing 3d will take longer render as well it's need produce some artifact maybe graining that you need rework combination of those clouds will create a more realistic look as a cloud you'll have it in 3d you have it main and some of this again you'll be familiar already we have it cloud altitude depth of the clouds we can localize to specific areas of them with a radius and center so we can set for example just create clouds around this mountain so we can go ahead and localize right here you can see we have a circle and let me just readjust kind of zoom out okay, and you can see this circle it's localized for our clouds so we have it, we have it our center set and for example again if I want to go right here I can click copy coordinates paste my coordinates so I will place my clouds some around this area of the mountain and you can see right now my clouds kind of going in this area it's a nice way if you want to create around um, so let me go bring back my camera if I want to bring and create those clouds just maybe around kind of this mountain so I can go ahead and, and a very fast way to create this okay we also have it altitude 
and depth so we can bring them up and down so let's go for example we can bring in you can see right here how the clouds go up and down okay we can bring them all the way to create a ground fog and all our fog it is when clouds on a kind of on the ground so it's of this and again let's increase color uh, cloud depth you can see how they increasing so we have it increase overall height so we we'll can bring it just a little, little bit up okay and we're creating this height of the clouds depth however depth when we're using in 2d it's not necessarily will be applied because we have different radius overall and let me bring a little bit closer maybe to a specific area just a bit of it maybe too far 700 yeah i think this is about so you can see it's localized we can have a density work edge sharpness of the clouds cloud density overall lighting and also the coverage adjustment if needed okay let's go ahead next we have a color tab and this is overall color color uh cloud color and scattering of the lights that passing through so example we're going can set this to um let's say one red you can see when lights coming right here the scattering will give it just slightly red this is nice effect you can use it when you do lighting anyone create this red sunset you can increase and manipulate with a scattering light to create a little bit more kind of sunsetish look okay lighting we have a sun glow amount what is happening when sun ray hit the cloud the photons will bounce from one another uh, particles inside the cloud um, and it will transfer its light and also it will decay so you can specify by glowing how many photons will affect it how long and how much uh, light power will decay per one uh, particles to another so we'll have it glowing if we want to have it very glow we can always increase and from the sun right here you can see we have it quite big glowing effect as well pop up less sun power so it will create kind of very nice sun distribution light propagation is what i says how far it will going uh, minimum and a fake internal scattering because we have an internal decay of the light in this case we can reduce or fake internal uh, scattering increase or decrease the best way think about this when you're creating a rain cloud and you want to create the heavy full of the rain kind of cloud you want to decrease the propagation so it will light decay faster or if the light and you can increase it okay we also have an environment light that is currently set by default and it's applied overall lighting on the cloud you can apply specifically function distributions to or modulations to the clouds the light modulations and this is we going to look a little bit more in advanced actual tutorials about cloud and lighting because we can um, work with the clouds going over kind of going over a shape of the mountains and a little bit more advanced as well we have an additional tweak same like in atmospheres we can increase quality and this is important when you see two grain kind of lights going very grainy inside so you can increase the quality again any qualities increasing will increase render time please remember this and you also have it optimizations so if you have a 2d shadow maps you can produce um, shadows on the grounds or on other lights that is maybe work a little bit better and as well you have it there um voxel buffer if you need for the optimizations okay also on the top right here you can notice we can move textures with the clouds if necessary applied and some additional enable enable primary or secondary lightings okay overall clouds is kind of powerful and popular but think about this it's volumetric it is um, density so it is very high on the calculations very hard to calculations the more stuff you added the more render time it will take it but again this is one of the biggest powerful tool inside Terrigen that make look very nice okay 2d's let's look very fast mostly you find them very familiar except one thing right here you have it cloud depth so we can creating but it is still project in 2d 
So it's one half of this calculating sum value metric. Overall, they're very useful when you create um, above very high clouds. But even then, you can see a little bit, okay, when it's rendered. Let me go see if I can render and preview now. Okay, at this point, you can see we have quite a bit grainy because it's not optimized. But overall, you can see the difference. They're nice on a distance. But when you close up and you want this depth, so you want to use the 3D for the depth. And for far away, maybe lighter, so you want to use a 2D. So combination of this will create more real look, but it will have a different. However, look, it's, uh, they will have it almost no um, or very kind of acceptable to the uh, grayness effect, of course, on 2D and 3D because how photon distribution and absorption you will have it quite a bit grain to worry about. Okay, overall, here is a cloud and we'll look on them, how to work with them and manipulate a little bit more in our other set of tutorials.